Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker pop wheat and Quaker pop rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On, you huskies! Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon, a stampede to the Klondike and the wild race for riches, back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog Yukon King as they meet... The Challenge of the Yukon. (laughs) Fellas and girls, long hours at school or (whistles) playing football or games calls for a hearty breakfast. Tomorrow, make yours a breakfast of delicious Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice with milk and fruit. Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice furnish extra health benefits of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. What's more, these ready-to-serve king-size kernels of premium wheat or rice are shot from guns to make them crisp and tender. They're delicious. Yes, try them. You'll say, here's the breakfast we like to eat. Quaker puffed rice. Or Quaker puffed wheat. At Mounted Police Headquarters in Whitehorse, two officers, Constable Drake and Corporal Jenkins, sat talking beside the big stove. The subject of their conversation, a big black dog, lay at the younger Mounty's feet, and Constable Drake smiled down at him as he told Corporal Jenkins about him. Well, Shadow's a little too big to use with the average dog team. Well, what breed is he, anyway? Mm, he's half wolf and half Newfoundland. <laughs> Shadow. That's certainly a good name for him. He never lets you out of his sight. You ought to meet Sergeant Preston. He's up in Dawson City. He has a dog that's just as faithful as Shadow. Mm, you mean King. Mm-hmm. <laughs> of course, I've heard of both of them. They're almost a legend in the force. Yeah, I'd like to see that dog of Preston's. They say he's a wonder. You'd have a lot in common with Preston. Well, maybe you'll get a trip north one of these days. Well, I doubt it. Until we clean up Soapy Smith's gang, we haven't enough officers here in Whitehorse. Like to have an assignment up there, though. It's rough country, Drake. But it's interesting. Can one of you officers come with me right away? I just found old Jim Patterson out in his cabin at the edge of town. He's dying, I think. Oh, what's that? Somebody robbed him and must have gone off thinking he was dead. Jim Patterson? Yeah. Well, of course. I'll be right with you, Jake. Yeah. You're off duty, Drake. You don't have to go. Yeah. I'll go with you anyway. I like old Jim. Yeah, come along, Shadow. Oh, 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 oh. Is Jim conscious at all? He's, he's trying to talk, but I... I didn't wait to get what he said. I headed straight for here. As the two men bent over Jim Patterson in the small cabin at the edge of town, they knew he was dying. The old prospector recognized Constable Drake and made a supreme effort to tell him something. Hey, the man, the man. Take it easy, Jim. You're going to tell me who did this? Were there two men? Yes. You, you know... I know them. The man. The man that kicked Shadow. Did he say the man who kicked Shadow? Yes. He means the other night in the Silver Dollar Cafe. (laughs) Is that what you mean, Jim? He's not in his head. That man is Jeff Gibson, and he had a half-breed with him called Moose. Are they the ones you mean, Jim? Yes. They... They robbed me. They... Jim. Jim. Is, is, is he gone, Corporal? He's dead. Yeah, poor Jim. Why, these men he was talking about, Drake? Uh, they were newcomers in town. Uh, one of them bumped into me the other night when I went into the Silver Dollar Cafe. Shadow growled at him and he kicked him. You know, Shadow would have torn him apart, but I caught him in time. I asked the bartender about them later. They were rough-looking customers and I got their names. Jim was sitting at a nearby table. Would you know the men if you saw them again? Of course. Uh Uh-huh. Well, the inspector will probably give you the case. I'm going to ask for it. Jeff Gibson's going to pay for this. And Shadow has a debt to settle with him, too. 
About a week later, up in Dawson City, Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police entered the office of Inspector Grayson. Beside the Mountie, a big gray dog walked quietly and stood at Sergeant Preston's side as he stopped before the inspector's desk. Good morning, Sergeant. Morning, sir. Hello there, King. (laughs) He always waits until I speak to him. That's quite a trick you've taught him, Sergeant. He's part of the force, sir, and has to obey regulations. I wish we had a dozen dogs like King. Uh, Sergeant, I'm putting you on a case with Constable Drake. He's coming up here from Whitehorse. Have you ever met him? Why, no, sir, I haven't. I've heard of him, though, from some of the officers who know him. Isn't he the one who has a big black dog that's rather unusual? Yeah, he's the man. I met him once in Whitehorse. I suppose the men told you about him because you have a lot in common. He likes dogs uh, about as much as you do, and his dog Shadow is just about as faithful to him as King is to you. I hear the dog's half Newfoundland and half wolf. Rather an unusual combination. Yes, I saw him. He has wolf ears and slanting gray eyes and long black hair. (laughs) But it isn't the dog we're supposed to be interested in. It's the man Drake is after. One, a half-breed, is known as Moose. The other is Jeff Gibson. Here's the description of them. It isn't very good. Gibson is a dangerous man, and Constable Drake will need help. He's never been in this part of the country. I'd like that assignment, sir. You're going south on your next patrol anyway, and I suggest that you continue on down to Selkirk. You'll probably meet Constable Drake on the way. Yes, sir. And keep an eye open for Jeff Gibson and Moose. They're in this part of the country somewhere. Constable Drake knows them by sight. We'll get them, Inspector. Won't we, King? As Sergeant Preston proceeded south toward Selkirk, two men many miles away were headed north on the same trail. Jeff Gibson and Moose plodded along wearily on foot, carrying their packs on their backs. As they walked up a steep slope, Moose, the half-breed, stopped suddenly. Don't can go much more. Be tired. We'll cap at the top of this hill. I'm tired, too. Now, come on. Uh, bit bad our dogs get loose. I told you to fix the harness. It was all your fault. We'll get a team somehow. Yeah, lose time. Maybe mounted police after us already. Ah, quit yapping. I'm not afraid of the mounted police. <laughs> Maybe Jim Patterson not die. Maybe him tell we robbed him. Maybe you're crazy, too. <laughs> Here's the top of the hill. Better stop up here while we eat. And see the whole trail for miles. Hey, look, down there. Go, King come. Yeah, coming fast, too. Get behind that rock. <laughs> yeah, that's a big team. Just what we need. Say, wait a minute. What's wrong? Look at that big black dog. It isn't hitched with the team. Huh? It looks like that Mounties dog. The one that went for me in the cafe the other night. Look how big it is. You think maybe that Mountie? I know it is. I'd know that black cur is anywhere. No wonder that's a big dog team. It's Constable Drake, and he's alone. We better hide off trail. Hide nothing. I'm waiting right here behind this rock till he gets close enough to shoot at. You not kill Mountie that bad, we get caught. Nobody will find him. <laughs> Good beat on him from here. You get him. Wait a minute. I'll get a beat on that big black dog. You hit dog, too. Come on, Moose. We're getting ourselves a dog team of supplies. Sure was nice of Constable Drake to come along just when we needed him. He didn't think he was this close on our trail. Maybe him not dead. Moose and Jeff hurried to the side of the fallen man. Jeff crouched and examined the bullet wound, then looked up at Moose and grinned smugly. He's dead, all right. I knew I didn't miss. We take team and go now. No, we're going to bury him first. I don't want him found. You know what it would mean if they found a dead Marty. Ground too hard, bury him. It'd take long time. We'll cover him with branches and snow. There's a shovel and pick on a sled. Say, wait a minute. Huh? I got an idea. Drake is just my size. Hey, what you do? I'm going to change clothes with him. Uh, you dress like Marty. Sure. It'll be a lot easier traveling as a Marty. And you can be my guide. We'll say we came all the way from Whitehorse, chasing two criminals called Jeff Gibson and Moose. Nobody around here will even suspect us. Go on, start getting branches and digging while I change clothes with them. Get that pick off his sled. We buried dog, too. Now, we gotta hurry before someone comes along. Nobody will worry about a dog, but a dead man is something different. Go on now, hurry. Soft flakes of snow were falling as Sergeant Preston drove his dog team along the trail towards Selkirk the following day. He was accompanied by Jean Duquette, a trapper he had met on the trail that morning. 
Me, I am lucky to meet you, Sergeant. Them four, they are heavy to carry all the way to Selkirk. Glad to give you a lift, Gene. The snow keeps falling much longer. We'll be lucky to get there ourselves. We have made good time since morning. Yes, about time to stop and eat, though. Hey, what is wrong with Gene? Oh, hi, oh, Gene. You must see something off the trail there. What is it, boy? Snow's so heavy, I can't see anything. He, he go off trail. Let's see what it is. Where are you, King? There he is. There's a black dog lying there. Here, King. Stay back, boy. That black dog. He is hurt, no? Too weak to get up. Oh, hello there, fellow. Look. He has bullet wound across his head. Yes, it does look as if a bullet had creased his skull. Steady, fellow. I won't hurt you. He find himself soft place to lie. These branches, all covered with snow. Yes, he doesn't seem to want to leave. He is different looking dog. I, I have never seen one like that. Looks as if he might be part Newfoundland and part wolf. Gene, this must be Constable Drake's dog. The man you tell me about? The one you are to meet? Yes, look. Gray eyes, wolf ears, long black hair. Well, maybe that Maori, he think he is dead and leave him. Constable Drake would never do that. This dog's a pet. Something must have happened to the constable. Gene, we're going to see what's under this pile of branches. We'll continue our story in just a moment. I am thinking of something. Can you tell me what it is? Gee, it looks like we're going to play that swell game again. Boy, and all of us can play it too. Right, kids. Remember, you just ask me questions. I'll answer right or wrong. And you see how quick you can guess just what it is I'm thinking of. Ready? Okay. Let's see. Is it something famous? Right you are, Billy. Oh, gosh, it wouldn't be Quaker Pup Wheat or Quaker Pup Rice. We had that before. And it wouldn't be the gun that shoots them either. Nope. Does it have anything to do with Quaker Puffed Wheat or Quaker Puffed Rice? Yep, very much so. Boy, this is tough. Well, here's a tip. What's your favorite color? Mine's red. Mine's blue. Hmm, red and blue. Does that remind you of anything? Oh, sure. The red and blue Quaker package. That's close, Sandra. Actually, what I'm thinking of in particular is something else right on the front of every package of Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. Oh, now, Billy, don't look so discouraged. Cheer up. Smile. Hmm? Oh, gee, I got it. It's a smiling Quaker man on the package. Right, kids. I was thinking of the smiling Quaker man on the front of every package of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. And when you fellows and girls want the swellest tasting breakfast ever, think of delicious, ready to serve wheat or rice shot from guns. And when you want the original Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, there's only one way to get these crisp, tender, king-size kernels exploded up to eight times normal size. Ask for crisp, fresh Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. They're never sold in bags or bulk. Yes, always remember to buy the big red and blue package with a smiling Quaker man on the front. He's your guarantee that you're getting the one and only Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Now to continue our story. Shadow knew that the body of his master lay beneath the mound of twigs and branches. He felt that it was his duty to stand on guard. But Sergeant Preston had other ideas. He stepped forward. Stay back there, King. It's all right, boy. He won't hurt me. Come on, fella. Easy now. Uh, you are a brave man, Sergeant. Me, I would not like to do that. There, he's off it. Now, well, let's get out those branches. Uh, soon this snow would have covered them all. Help me with this big one, yeah, would you? Yeah, there. Maybe I should get shovel. There's loose snow and dirt. No, I don't think it's necessary. We didn't do a very thorough job. We can no. scrape it away with our hands. Uh, That's your master, uh, isn't it, old boy? We get his body all right. Here it is. But look, this man... It's Constable Drake. They took his clothes, but they didn't take time to remove his shoes. A regulation. I'm wearing a fair exactly like them. But who would do things like this? Probably the men he was after. Jeff Gibson and Moose. They must have ambushed him. But this dog, he would fight them. They must have thought they'd killed him. You think they take clothes so no one will know he is Monty? Maybe another reason. The man who did this may be wearing the uniform. He pretend he is Monty? It'll be a good disguise. He could go anywhere, as long as he avoided members of the force. He's probably headed for the border. But they would meet us on trail. 
That is way they must go to border on trail we come on. Wouldn't be hard to avoid us. They saw us coming. We have gone into a canyon off the trail until we passed. This snow has covered all tracks. Maybe they go back to Selkirk. Constable Drake just came from there. Doubt they'd take that chance. Then you go back to Dawson? Yes, Jean. I'll take the body to headquarters for identification. I have to carry the dog in the sled, too. He's too weak to travel on foot. I hope you get this fellow who'll do this. I'll get them, all right. Anyone who kills a mounted policeman always pays for it, and I'll get Jeff Gibson. The heavy snowfall had not stopped Jeff Gibson and Moose as they traveled north with Constable Drake's dog team. But the miles of travel on foot had sapped their strength. As they neared the town of Deer Creek, they could think only of warmth and shelter from the rising wind. We come town soon. You know this territory. What town is it? Deer Creek. It's not far from here. Is it very big? Just trading post and few cabins. Uh, that ought to be a good place to stop. It's getting dark. We get supply at trading post. Now, so many people to know we're here. We'll go straight through town. Stay at one of the cabins on the outskirts. Maybe we can get a prospector to buy our supplies for us. Bush! Bush, you husky! By the time Jeff and Moose had reached the town, the early darkness had settled. And nobody saw the two man and dog team as they plodded through the thick snowfall. A small cabin lay ahead at the very edge of Deer Creek. And Jeff stopped the team near it. Oh, 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 oh. Here's a good place. It's a good distance away from the other cabins. You think we can stay here for a night? We can with this uniform. You feed the dogs, Moose, and get them fixed up for the night. I'll handle this. Uh. Hey, who are you? Constable Drake of the Northwest Mounted Police. Oh, a Mountie, eh? Well, come in, come in. You're just in time for supper. Take off your park and sit down beside the stove and warm yourself. Oh, thanks. My guide is feeding the dogs. There's a blizzard coming up. Thought maybe you'd put us up for the night. I sure will. Anything I can do for the mounted police, I'm happy to do. See, I can't remember seeing you around here before. You a new man? Well, I came up from Whitehorse. This is my first trip up here. We're on the trail of some criminals. We don't want people to know we're here. If these men find out I'm close on their trail, it'll be harder to get them. As it is, they'll be careless. They don't know we're after them. Well, who are they? Maybe I've seen them. A man by the name of Jeff Gibson and his partner. We think they're around here somewhere. Well, you don't have to worry. I won't tell anybody that you're here. Oh, maybe later on you'd go to the trading post for me and get some supplies. Then nobody will know we've been here. Well, sure, I'd be glad to. I'll go right after supper. Now, uh, you just sit down and make yourself at home while I start rustling up some grub here. Oh, oh say, I didn't even tell you my name. It's Hank. Hank Stevens. As the evening wore on, the snowstorm stopped as suddenly as it had begun. Through it all, however, Sergeant Preston continued his way to Deer Creek. It was some time later that he stopped his team and entered the trading post. Hello there, Sergeant Preston. You're traveling late tonight. How are you, Sandy? I couldn't waste any time. I'm after two murderers. Murderers? Well, perhaps you'd seen them. One of them would be dressed in a mounted police uniform. You don't mean, Sergeant... That one of the force murdered somebody? No, this man murdered Constable Drake. I have his body out on my sled. Murderers dressed in his clothes. Murdered a Mountie. Mm, I'd hate to be him. Seen the cat and I found his body. While Sergeant trail. Preston explained the details of the crime to Sandy and the trading post, Hank Stevens and Moose were nearing it to buy the supplies. The moon had broken through the clouds and lighted their path. Well, uh, I'm glad that snowstorm's done with it. Looked like a real storm was coming, but... Uh, Guess it blew over. Yeah. It clear for travel tomorrow. Yep. You and Constable Drake can get an early start. Maybe you'll catch them murderers. Hey, look. In front trading post. Yeah, sled and dog team. It looked like dog on sled. It is a dog. Big black one. He's tied. Maybe he's hurt or something. Him lie on something wrapped in blanket. Yeah. Looks as if it might be a body or something. Well, say, this looks like Sergeant Preston's team. I'll bet he's inside the trading post. He'll be a big help to Constable Drake find them murders. Uh, we better go in and tell him. No, no, tell him. But he's a Mountie. He probably knows about it anyway. I'm going to... No, you do nothing! Oh! 
you tell nothing. Moose raced back to the small cabin where Jeff was getting ready for bed. As he burst into the door, Jeff looked up curiously. Are you back with the supplies already? Come. We get out of here now. All right, what's wrong with you? Marty here from town. Him find big dog you think you kill. Him after us. Oh, Marty? Where's Hank? You didn't let him see the Marty, did you? Me hit him. Him unconscious. Him freeze before morning. Oh, hurry, grab some grub. You should have made sure Hank was dead. You may come to before he freezes and start laughing. Head cold. Him freeze soon. Come, we go now. I'm ready. You get the dogs hitched. Them dog too tired. No can go fast. We get caught like that. Well, we'll sure get caught if we go on foot. I'm taking that dog team. Me go cross country. Me not go with you. Go ahead. I won't stop you. We'll split the gold we got from Jim Patterson and separate. Maybe we can shake that Marty better if we go in different directions. Anyway, you may never know we've been here. Jeff and Moose hurriedly divided the stolen gold, then set out from the cabin. In the meantime, Sergeant Preston had finished the hot tea Sandy had made for him. As he put the cup down, Sandy noticed the deep lines of fatigue in his face from the long, hard trip he had had that day. Sergeant, you're dead in your feet. Uh, why don't you just go to bed and let me put the dogs away for the night? I'll get my pocket. That sounds like a good idea, Sandy. I am tired, but I'd better help you with the dogs. That black one on the sled needs special handling. Uh, you'd better bring him in here for the night if he's wounded. No, I'm afraid he wouldn't leave the body of his master. I'll let him sleep beside it. Well, I'll help you with the dogs. One king. <laughs> Moon's out. Temperature's still pretty low, though. As King came out of the trading post with a sergeant, the scent of blood came to his nostrils. As he turned the corner of the building, he found the unconscious form of Hank Stevens. Then he heard Sergeant Preston calling him. King, what are you doing, boy? What is it, King? What, what? Did he find something? Yes, he did. It's a man. Light a match, Sandy. It's Hank Stevens. Somebody knocked him out. His head is bleeding. He's regaining consciousness. Steady there. You'll be all right. He, he hit me. Who did? The, the big man. He was called Moose. Moose? The tra traveling with a, with a mountie. What mountie? Drake. Constable Drake. They were at my place. Uh, he fainted again. I'll carry him into the trading post. I think the man who hit him and the one he called Drake are the men I'm after. Here are some tracks, Sergeant. They lead back toward Hank's cabin. Oh? And they're fresh. Help me get him inside first, Sandy. And King and I will leave while the trail's fresh. But when Sergeant Preston reached Hank's cabin, both Moose and Jeff had disappeared. The moon, riding high in the heavens, threw a bright light on the trail, where the tracks of the men were written clearly. It was then that the Mountie faced a new problem. <laughs> Yes, old boy, they've gone off in different directions. One of them on snowshoes, heading for the hills, and the other kept on the trail with a dog team. Well, King, I hate to do this, but we must get both of them. Hope nothing happens to you, fellow, but you're going to get one of them alone. I'll go after the other one, the one with the dog team, boy. Now, you, King, these tracks. Get him, King, and hold him. Guard him, boy. I'll find you. Get him! On, King! On, you huskies! Push! Push on! It was almost an hour later that a dark blot on the white snow of the trail ahead made the Mountie slow down, leave his team, and approach on foot. It was a sled and team, the dogs lying exhausted in the snow. Just as Preston bent over the sled, there was a spurt of flame from a thicket about 50 yards away. A bullet whistled close to the Mountie's ear. In a split second, Sergeant Preston's gun answered. A crash of branches told him he had hit his mark. Cautiously, he approached his gun held ready. But Gibson lay motionless in the snow until the Mountie bent to see how badly he had been hit. Then the outlaw turned quickly and his gun came up. I'll catch you. Wait. Preston felt the gun's flame brush his cheek. Taken completely by surprise, he was off balance. He threw himself to one side. Playing possum, I'll eh? I'll tell you. Jeff Gibson fired again. Then Preston's gun barked. Oh. One, one bullet tugged at the Mountie's tunic, but Preston's shot was true. It hit the other's shoulder with sledgehammer force. Jeff's arm was numb and helpless. His gun fell to the snow. That was a good trick. It nearly worked. It got me. I give up. You, Jeff Gibson? Yes. Yes, you know I have. Oh, my shoulder. Don't, don't kill me. I'll tell everything. I won't kill you. The law will take care of that. I arrest you in the name of the queen. My shoulder. I'll bring my dog sled here and take you back to town. Hurry. Hurry up. 
In the meantime, King raced after the man his master had told him to catch. His silent gray form streaked over the snow like a shadow. And Moose, though he turned now and then to look over his shoulder, was sure he was not being pursued. Silently and swiftly, the great dog King closed the gap between them. And then, with a roar, he leaped at the half-breed's back, knocking him to the ground. Get away! Stop, you devil! Help! Where my gun? Desperately, Moose reached for his gun, but King's great jaws closed over his arm. No! My arm! Let go! Stop you! The great dog King had learned his business well. Careful training had taught him how to handle a gunman. He increased the pressure of his jaws on Moose's arm until the outlaw dropped his gun. Then King relaxed the arm and stood with bared fangs close to Moose's throat. Paralyzed with fear, the big man lay still. The slightest movement brought a warning growl. No, no. Sweating with terror, the killer lay motionless and helpless. Time passed slowly. King wondered how long he must remain here on guard, but he didn't relax his vigilance. And then at last, as the moon was sinking behind the hills, Sergeant Preston approached over the clearly defined snowshoe trail that led from town. The Mountie was a welcome sight. <laughs> Well, old fella, you did it. Good boy, King. Long wait, wasn't it? Take, take dog away. All right, King. Back, fella. Let him up. I have his gun. Get up, Moose. You're under arrest. Your partner's back in town. My feet. Them almost free. Get up and start walking. That will thaw them out. <laughs> Keep dog away. That dog's staying right behind you. Your partner had some of the gold that was stolen from Jim Patterson. I suppose you have the rest. Yes. The charges against you are robbery and murder. That... The dog. You couldn't get away from him, Moose. He's a member of the Northwest Mounted Police. <laughs> Good work, King. When we get back, you can tell Shadow that you got your man. And that this case is closed. <laughs> In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Monday's program. Here's how Mother can make your family a breakfast-happy family this coming weekend. Be sure to order Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Just one bowl full of this swell-tasting, ready-to-serve cereal shot from guns, and you'll say nothing tastes so swell, except maybe two bowlfuls. But mind you, to get the original crisp, fresh wheat and rice shot from guns, always buy the big Quaker red and blue package. Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice is never sold in bags or bulk. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns. Listen Monday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the adventure of The Second Chance. How would you like it if you were faced with the necessity of tracking down and arresting one of your best friends? Well, that's what King and I thought we'd have to do after the robbery on the Christmas River Trail. We were wrong. Instead of a friend at the end of the trail, we found the smoking six guns of a pair of desperate killers. Be sure to hear this exciting story Monday. Till then, this is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. So long. For a delicious hot breakfast, eat Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Yes, the giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Say, boys and girls, do you want to be a star someday in sports and activities? Then start on good Quaker Oats breakfast tomorrow. Because nourishing oatmeal gives you more growth and endurance than any other whole grain cereal. Still less than one penny a serving. Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. <laughs> 